Welcome. Last time, we discussed the phenomenology's first main division, A, consciousness, and made the transition to B, self-consciousness. Today, we will take up self-consciousness and make our transition to C, reason. B, self-consciousness. We have now reached a critical turning point in the phenomenology. For self-consciousness is, in essence, the end of the book. All that remains is to increase the contents of the I, self, or concept by filling it with the remaining contents, objects, of consciousness. Self-consciousness has three parts. The truth of self-certainty, the introduction, truth, life, and desire. Independence and dependence of self-consciousness, master and slave recognition. And the freedom of self-consciousness, stoicism, skepticism, and the unhappy consciousness. The object here is the I and life, another I, the world, and God. Our three questions and brief answers are the following. One, we start again at the beginning with immediacy, not yet having accomplished the unification of self-consciousness and consciousness, the task of this section. Hence, the self, or I, has a double object, itself and a sense object. The self, I, is first desire, or the need to negate the sense object's otherness and turn it into itself. Thus, our question, why can desire be satisfied only when the object is another self, an I, that is, by recognition? In brief, because another self is an object that is also a subject, in which I can continually see myself in this object and do not have to destroy or negate it, as I had to do with the previous selfless object of desire. Two, why does recognition by two eyes lead to a fight to the death and the master-slave dialectic, the beginning of history and states? Also, why does the slave not the master, make all further historical progress. In brief, because the goal of recognition is for both selves to see themselves in each other. Each self wants to be recognized by the other, but is unwilling to recognize the other in turn. Also, all I really see is your physical sense body. How do I know you are not just a body or a thing like all the other objects I have been dealing with and negating? You thus have to prove to me that you are a self, a being for self, a subject, and hence free as well by risking your life and showing me that your body and life are not of ultimate importance, since you are way more than them, than a creature of nature. The slave makes all further progress simply because of his formative activity for the master, causing him to see himself in the independent object and thus realize his own independence and freedom.
Three, as regards B, freedom of self-consciousness, what are the worldviews of stoicism, skepticism, and the unhappy consciousness and their respective attitudes towards the world? In brief, the Stoic knows that in thinking I am free. However, he lives only in his interior life, in his mind, and is aloof from the world. The skeptic engages with the world and shows, by skeptical equipolent pro and con argument, how objects are not real but only appearance. The unhappy consciousness, the medieval monk, wants to unite with God, the distant and unchangeable other, but finds it impossible. The world is transitory and has value only so far as it leads to this goal. The monk renounces his will and all decision-making responsibility to the priest, who ultimately unites the two extremes, which leads to reason and the modern world. 